what is going on everybody happy friday this is the fireside chat i am the handler of chronic chris page we are uh you know balls deep into uh year two of this program uh last week on the show had uh um god damn who did i have on this program last week oh fuck me running uh rian keto from the xwf was on this program last week uh that's a, there's our first edit right there uh didn't even make it fucking 10 seconds in i told you buddy uh this week on the program the the trend of uh, xwf talent continues uh this gentleman's probably been in the game for at least since i've been back in the xwf and we're gonna find out a lot more about him here today uh you, you may know him you may not if you do great if you don't you will by the end of this program he is the handler of uh big money oswald uh ozzy buddy what's going on man how are you uh nothing much have i'm doing okay how about yourself man living the 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 dream in florida uh you know it's been <laughs> 90 fucking degrees plus every day for the last i don't know month and a half so trying to stay indoors and stay cool uh, but other than that, it's, you know, you know, it's kind of doing my thing. Cool. Cool. So before we get started, tell me about, uh, how you got into the game. What, uh, initially, you know, sought your interest into, to e-fitting. Uh, fuck. I'm, uh, 35 years old. So I've been a wrestling fan for years, um, I, my mom always said I came out the room popping uh, Hulkamania, like flexes and Shawn Michaels struts and stuff like that. Like she swears I was bouncing around in there. So <laughs> I've always been, I've been a fan of wrestling for years. And then I grew up in the lovely time where re- the internet started to, you know, grow up a lot more and more and. Grew up with that crappy dial-up sound, you know. Everybody that's older knows that sound. You've got mail. <laughs> were you, did you were you in the game in the dial-up days? Yeah, I a long time ago. Not in XWF, but like I was around, and I was like twelve, man. So I had no writing <laughs> style. <laughs> I should not have been part of any efeds, man. Well, that was back I, in Ozzy. That was back in a time where, like, you know, writing three or four paragraphs was like a fucking an, you know, an epic. Uh, so, like, to see where the games come since then, I didn't know that you had got into it uh, back in the dial-up days. Were you doing uh, email-based feds or were you doing board-based feds? It was board. Okay. All right. Like, we, if I remember right, in I'm probably going to get this wrong, too, because we'll probably get to why in the future. Um, back then, like, you had the boards, but at the same time, it, like, if you wanted to, you could email your stuff, too. So it's like, it was like a mix in okay. some of these boards that was a part of. That sounds like Just a transitionary <laughs> period from, from email to boards. It sounds yeah, like we're, 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 you came in right on the cusp of e-fetting 2.0. Yeah. I, like I said, I was like 12, 13 going into it. What was the first character? Uh, I was actually, like, they allowed you to be wrestlers of any time anyway. So you didn't have to come up with characters. Uh, I decided to be the Hardy Boys because... You know, I was a kid, <laughs> teenage, like very young boy. I loved Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, and I was like, okay, I'll I'll play as the Hardy Boys. Why not? I mean, <laughs> excuse me, if the shoe fits, wear it, brother. Um, I know uh, back in this would have been like what ninety six, ninety seven ish. So like wow. you're, you're in real life, we're on the cusp of the Attitude Era, and. Uh, we're not too far away from from the epic tag team feud with the Hardys, the Dudleys, and uh, uh, what was it, the Brood, Edge and Christian. Yeah. Uh, and they, they did their ladder match in 2000, so we're a couple of years away from that. But they were they were definitely on the build there uh, in 97 into 98. So I could see why you would do that. Fucking team team extreme running one more time. Uh, yeah. How'd that go for you? 
terrible. Oh, terrible. Oh, fucking A. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was terrible, man. Like, I was plagiarizing like a motherfucker because I didn't know a damn thing about how to write at that time. <laughs> like, I, I looked at other people's promos, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll, like, do very little small tweaks. That that totally went good for me. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, my God. You know how many people enjoyed that. Growing pains in the game at 12 years old, bud. That's all you <laughs> yeah. can that's all you could chalk that shit up to, man. Pretty much. Uh, I didn't Go ahead. Like I I didn't get into e-fetting for a couple years after that. Like I was like, yeah, I screwed up so bad. I needed to grow up some for if I wanted to do this stuff again. Uh I came into e-fetting again like in 2001. You know, that's where the emailing basically stopped completely. Like, I never saw anybody be like, oh, you can send an email about your promo. This was just purely board-based. And uh, with, what's funny is, like, that was my first iteration of Ghost Tank. No. <laughs> so Ghost Tank was a thing uh, back in 2001. Yeah. So this is your first created character? Yep. Uh, all right. Give me the premise. What 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 brought on the the idea of, of Ghost Tank? I have always loved Luchadors, but I've always like I always loved the giant, all white. You know, mm -hmm. he was this big dude that was doing missile drop kicks from the top rope and shit. You know, I was like, what if you took somebody that size? but made him able to do luchador-esque stuff. And that's how I was like, I'll make Ghost Tank like that. Just this, because I always thought that was like some big spectacle. Now, you've got guys nowadays like Keith Lee that can do that kind of stuff, you know? Oh, for sure. Very agile. But yeah, that was like, yeah. Back then, that that was my inspiration. It was like, I'll combine these two things I enjoy, and I think as a wrestling enjoyer, like, what I would love to see is see this big, like, just imagine that, you know? There's this big guy, tall as hell, big as hell, just doing backflips, moonsaults, you know, corkscrew splashes. It was just this interesting idea to me I think. the high flying giant before there was a high flying giant exactly so how did the how did ghost tanks first run go i was actually not bad at that time like i don't know if people just were i was in the fed at that time i don't even remember the name of it back like it's been so long ago how dare <laughs> um, you not remember 21 years ago buddy I know. For shame. <laughs> I'm, I'm a disgrace to e -fitting. I know, man. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cancel but, you because um, of that now. <laughs> the only things I remember was I wasn't a world champion, but I was a several-time like extreme champion. I was uh, a couple-time tag team champion. Like that, I didn't do too bad. That's basically pretty and that federation was like my last one for years well can you think back and if you can great if you can't then we'll we'll, we'll transition on but any, any names that you remember uh going up against back in the in the you know 2001 2002 era honestly i can't but i remember my friend was into e-fetting for a hot minute and he was my tag partner he went by creeping death a great Metallica track right there. Yeah. Uh, love it. Love it. Uh, well, you say you took a break. So when do you remember uh, coming back into the game? Uh, man. I actually, the last, for, I took a big break. Like, 
I think the last time I e fed it before coming to XWF was uh, 2002, and that was the last fed as well. Like that first one coming back, and last one before this big break. Like I was gone from e fedding for like 12 years. That is a a lengthy hiatus. Uh, so that tells me that you're coming back in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2014. Okay. Yeah. You just missed my second stint in the XWF <laughs> in 2014. I think, I, I think I wrapped things up there on bad terms, uh, I don't know, 2012, 2013 ish. Uh, yeah. then it took fucking what, seven years to turn around and revisit that um so when you, you came back how did you find the xw i was during that time i had that uh like period where i wasn't e-fetting i was still like role-playing but you know it wasn't e-fetting i was just like medieval stuff and then i got into world of warcraft and you know it was like a lot of this stuff shaped my uh writing as well because that I was in high school after that last EFED. I was like, I got so into English and I loved writing essays and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? I'll try and write my own stories. You know, try and make a book. And I never did. Still haven't. <laughs> but um, I was like, Okay, I've got this itch. I love wrestling again. CM Punk was, I think, coming out of it. But I was still, like, in that time where Daniel Bryan was starting to heat up and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? I had this itch to E-Fed once more. Uh, my writing has surpassed what it used to be. I'll try and come back to it. So I looked up a bunch of things, like different efeds, and I was like, this one has extreme in its name. <laughs> Maybe I'll go there. I like it looked interesting to me. Like it, it was like the only one that truly popped out to me. Every like I I think it was like maybe third or second ranked at the time. So I was like, okay, the first one didn't interest me. The ones that are surrounding it didn't interest me, so I'll go here. And I read a couple of promos, and I was like, yeah, I, these guys seem to have very interesting characters, and I'll tr try it here. And you came in as big money? Not right away. I That's when I came back as a ghost tank. But in a different incarnation, I guess you could say. Yeah. Still the high flying giant, but at that time, I wanted him to be this like crazy, like out of his mind, psycho psychotic, like killing machine, essentially. Like if you went back to 2014, October, that was when I. Uh, showed up I my very first match was a battle royale and a gamer girl then gamer boy was part of it that battle royale and I beat him oh shots fired because he's listening <laughs> yeah <laughs> get him Ozzy get him uh, it was very interesting so you, did, you so you came in and you you won the battle royal or, or you just yeah. eliminated that okay good deal so where, where did that take you from there uh, from there, I actually was, I continued to, like, opt into every show, and back then, all the shows were weekly, so there was, like, two shows every week, so I was doing Warfare, and I was doing Madness, so every week, I kept doing it and doing it, and I was putting out, like, seven, eight promos each, maybe, like, 800 words each, like, so... To me, that was a lot at the time, and now I feel like I'm not <laughs> doing the same amount of numbers with one promo. 
But um, yeah, I was going absolutely crazy back then. Well, I mean, excuse me, if you're thinking about it, 800 words, let's just round up to 1,000, and you're dropping six to eight pieces a week. That's 8,000 words, you know, times two yeah. for two shows, man. Like, so, you yeah, that's it's it's some writing. It's It can be a chore. Um, yeah. What kind of – did you pick up any championships uh, in this first run as Ghost Tank in the XWF? Uh, well – couple of things happened that kind of stopped the first round actually um my biggest moment that first run was the pay-per-view war games which is the very first pay-per-view that i had and i that was also the first uh cycle where i put in uh spots as well Mm -hmm. and i remember Writing in Ghost Tank, rushing into one of the other guys and breaking down one of the cage walls, splitting his head own head open at the same time, just his whole face a crimson mask and just has this like sickening grin on his face as he goes and continues to demolish other people. I was part of a the team with Evertrust and oh my goodness, I already oh, I was going up against uh, Asriel and his team mm-hmm. I, I wish I could remember everybody else, but um I had, uh, I went into the king of the I can't remember what we call it if we still call it king of the ring anymore, um king of the XWF king of the, yeah, uh, I went into that, and I went up against, uh, I'm going to say Name Redacted, because I a lot of people are going to know who it is, uh, and why his name, I don't want to ever say it. <laughs> he, he, people that, he who shall not be named, is that, is that, is that, 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 I think that's what I refer to him as? Starts with an F. No, 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 and that's not him. Yeah. But I know who you're speaking of. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's your call, but you don't have to speak it. You don't want to speak it, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I didn't go further than him. Uh, it was, it was still like fun, and then I got sick in real life, and I was. That's when uh. A lot of my role playing kind of got cut more and more because I was just feeling worse and worse. Mm-hmm. Started losing a lot more often than I was winning. And then I had to take a small couple of week break. Came back in December the same year. Mm-hmm. Still trying to overcome everything that was happening to me. And that, I believe, I was one of the last few champions for the then Intercontinental, if I remember correctly. Or tell, yeah, I believe it was. Before it got discontinued. So you held the IC title? Yeah. Nice job. See, I was never around when that belt was around, but... Um... Yeah. At least you got it, right? Yeah. I Again, the sickness came around, so I, at that time, I was actually kind of like losing my brain a little bit because a lot of medical shit was happening. I don't know if you want me to go into it or not. Well, it's up to you, man. Um, If you want to talk about it, you can. I mean, obviously, you and I go back a couple yeah. years through XWF, yeah. so I'm I'm familiar with your situation. It's, it's, I, I'm not going to tell you no, but I'm not going to say yes. It's your call. Well, for those that don't know me and would like to know me, um, around the end, like the middle of November, I started to get really sick. I thought it was the flu at the time. Turns out it was this uh, a 
sickness called C. difficile. Terrible thing happens when you take antibiotics and no, don't eat or consume like probiotic uh, supplements, and you just basically let everything go out of the back door. <laughs> yeah. like, it's just terrible. You feel like your stomach is being stabbed time and time again, like tiny knives, you know? Um, so I was hospitalized, came out on uh, Thanksgiving. So I was in there for like a week. My last match before I went to the hospital was against uh, Calypso. And that was the first time I brought up as well the, the meat hook match. Mm -hmm. That was like, I think that I thought I was like bringing up some kind of new stipulation. I don't know if anybody's ever done it. Probably have, probably haven't, but I thought I was innovative. <laughs> um, so uh, that was my last match before I got hospitalized. Came out, had the IC tournament. Won it, if I remember right. I this this is where everything gets hazy because at that time, I my body was going into such a decline that my organs were going through sepsis very slowly. So my mind is like hazy throughout the entirety of December, of January, and February. Mm -hmm. Like I until I was hospitalized again, but I was in a coma on February twenty eighth, uh, twenty fifteen. Like it was, uh, I just barely remember facing uh, a man that goes by uh, Pete, Peter. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah. When listen, I, and I'm, I'm, I'll get back to the EFIT stuff in a second. And when you were, you you fell into a coma, how long were you in a coma? Ten days. I actually woke up on my birthday, March 9th. Um. So yeah, knocked out, man. That's that's got to be that's terrible. Um, it it was the best sleep I ever had. <laughs> I mean, at that's least the you can best make way I had of to... it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I yeah. say. I, I, you know. When, when I was Man. going through chemo earlier this year, I was losing some of my hair, and I was, thank God I kept my head shaved anyway, because you know, I just did did, you know, did the job. Uh, kept it. Yeah. I I'd had shaved my head for years because I've got I had thinning hair on top. Uh, but you know, obviously when you're taking chemo and shit like that, you're you know you go bald. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I kind of let that thing yeah. do its thing and had a free haircut for. So I tell people at least I didn't have to cut my hair for fucking six months. <laughs> Same See, situation. That's the thing. You gotta find, you gotta find humor in it somewhere. Exactly. Like it, I. The thing after that, I came out of the coma and everything. Like my whole view on life changed a lot more. Same. Like it was uh, when I came out, I was like, yeah, there's some bullshit in the world, but on the whole, everybody's trying to be good, trying to just live life. There's a lot of good in the world. It's just we let news get into our brains too much, you know. We always think there's a lot of evil. There's a lot of evil. No, that's not the truth. The evil is like 10% of what's going on in this world. For it's sure. It's just we, we ex make it explode because that's what the news wants. But that's too political for this, right? Mass hysteria. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Getting back into the game after you uh uh you go through that little ordeal and and get out of the coma. How long was how long were you away before you decided to come back and give it a try again? Uh, not very long, and I regret coming back too soon because I was still I could barely walk still because I during that coma I also had a stroke and. That's why I kind of stutter a little bit when I talk or take a little bit too long when I'm trying to talk mm -hmm. because I, my brain is a little slow and I'm like trying to make sure I'm saying what I want to say and I'm not just like 
um, word vomiting all over the place. Oh, no, I get you. So, yeah, but at that time, I was still kind of out of it. My brain wasn't all there still, and I was still trying to pretend I was the same person I was before then, and that was not the case at all. You hadn't given yourself that that time to really adapt to what had has happened. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Which, you know, I get it. I, I was kind of the same way. Like, in my situation, it's obviously, you know, was severe. Uh, you know, it was definitely not in a coma by any means. Um, yeah. But, you know, what I had to do was uh, I, I, I fell back on what was uh, what made me happy. And that was writing writing consistently made me happy and it it took my mind off of the bullshit that i was having to deal with at the time and i guess you know it's different for everybody uh but you gotta you know you gotta find that thing that that keeps you going yeah that's pretty much what i did as well so chat me up on uh so when you came back were you still ghost tanking it or have we pivoted into uh big money oswald uh, that's territory. when it kind of started to change I wasn't Money Oswald yet I was just I was pivoting from Ghost Tank to Oswald just Oswald, Autumn, Septus before we go there the character I don't mean to step on you before we go there Sorry. I have to ask you this question because mm-hmm. we're getting out of Ghost Tank area so, obviously, you know, uh, back when I was doing the XWF podcast with the crew, we would uh, when Vinny would come on, he would always sign off with, fuck you, Ghost Tank. Yeah. What, what's the beef with Ghost Tank and Vinny Lane? Can, can you enlighten me? Because I never asked. Oh, man. Uh, well, that same guy I don't want to say the name of. Yep. Uh, he was a serial manipulator and at that time I was manipulated because I was sick and I wasn't there the entire time and you know during that I had to go through a lot of the logs and I wasn't I was still getting to know everybody you know I was still getting to know Vinny and Theo and all them but I was talking a lot more to that guy Yep, and he made me believe that Vinny was real about saying, oh, did he die? Because I was gone for like a week, you know. Now, looking back on it, yeah, it was a joke. And again, I I, I grew up, it, you know, I still, that's pretty much where it started. It's like... I took it too serious because I didn't know Vinny. And now Vinny's ribbing you years later with it. Yeah. That's a good rib. <laughs> like, yeah. but the whole thing, like, I had this whole, I hate Vinny for a couple of years because of that one guy. And. But just I'm, to be clear and, and be 100%, there is no heat between you and the handler of Vinny Lane. Of any kind, Man. it's all. This has all been a joke that has still continuously played out. I was always curious about that because I never, I never bothered to ask. There's no more heat now. Like past couple of years, there hasn't been any heat, but for a couple of years before, there was. Like on my end, mostly because Vinny because didn't... somebody got into your head essentially exactly yeah, yeah it makes sense that, that that makes sense okay so it's just it, ultimately that's just one big joke okay yeah got it all right now we can move into big money oswald because i you know i'm stoned obviously i'm i'm recording i've been smoking this entire time and i knew if i didn't <laughs> ask it then uh i was not going to and i was going to forget and i definitely wanted to hear the story um, but no, I got it, and 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 I can move forward to to Big Money Ozzy. Well, before he was Big Money Ozzy. Yeah. So check uh, me up. Let's go. Well, throughout 2015, I kind of like would uh, bring up this whole concept of death 
death incarnation and stuff like that make big money as well back then just be like this avatar for it you know this whole doom and gloom kind of stuff i started to make him more like action in my role plays and my promos Uh like a lot of fight scenes and things like that but for a few months there were some sight problems if i remember right so i took a little bit of time off but in 2016 i came back around i want to say march and that's when that concept went like ham like it was just ridiculous and i first and i mean in like a good way right yeah. it was like i ended up it kind of like a controversial thing is like in may of 2016 like for a couple of months straight i was putting out pretty good promos that i thought and it seemed like everybody else enjoyed them as well and I ended up winning the star of the month against somebody else. And that person, people wanted to give that guy the star of the month because he was running a show. He was doing, uh, he was writing matches. He was also doing role plays as well. So there was a little bit of controversy, controversy to my win there because people thought he earned it as well. But I kind of was in that mindset because of the asshole where I was like, yeah, I kind of feel entitled right now. So I ended up getting it. Kind of regret it. But at the same time, when I see the what that handler has done, kind of I don't regret it. Like, mm-hmm. the guy, the person was uh, both good and then bad at the same time for the fed so i'm glad they're gone um <coughs> so you take sorry, the, you know yeah. you're fine you take star of the month and then you yeah. uh what where, where are we going where we where, where's where's ozzy go from there uh from there the storyline continues and i end up being the heart champion and that's I, that's that the, was, my... that, was that on warfare at the time I can't remember exactly. I think it was just... I think it was like a... God, I wish I could remember things. Oh, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's not a big to-do. Yeah. Uh, But picking up the heart championship is is no easy task by any means. And your character as Ozzy has not even been in the game uh, or in the, you know, rotation of booking for, you know, four or five months. And you're already picking up one of the... You know, at that time, it would probably have been the third tier championship. Yeah, it it felt really good, and then that same guy that was in my head uh, wouldn't book me very often. Like I was at, I was like the champion. I should have been booked for every time I needed to defend it, you know, or at least put me on the show somehow. Didn't really do that. So I was essentially uh, the Brock Lesnar of the XWF because of this guy. (laughs) Special attraction, baby. Special attraction. (laughs) I would would only defend on pay-per-views and, like, special occasions. That was it. I held that month, that uh, title for several months. I was at that... By the time I lost it, I believe I was the longest running heart champion. But when I look back on it, I was like, yeah, I didn't really do shit. I didn't deserve that. <laughs> well, you can't help how you were booked. And you you, yeah. know, you, you, you didn't hold the pencil. And uh, there's, you know, uh, ultimately that comes from above. And, and at that time, running the Fed... Uh, was definitely not the people who are running it now, so I can uh, yeah. I can see that I could see it track. Um, so you become one of the longest running heart champions at the time. 
Uh, and then where do we, where do we go? When do we start pivoting into big money Aussie? Because, uh, obviously, uh, you know, getting into the 2019, into the, well, not 2019 stuff, 2020 stuff, our, our characters paths cross. Uh, so I'm just trying to see how far we are away from, from that. A little bit away still, actually. What you got um, next? I was, I was still Oswald Autumn Septus and, what happened is that I think we had more site issues happening later in 2016, and then we had some more in 2017. Around then, it was, um, I think I was like, okay, I can't deal with these uh, secondary boards. They were just annoying to me. <laughs> I'm like the boomer e fetter <laughs> then. <laughs> like, with these newfangled boards i i can't deal with it i'm gonna take some time off um when it all comes back i came back much later and during that time in real life uh broken matt hardy was the thing mm -hmm. so when i came back that's what i was like you know what i want to bring that universe into xwf what better way than to bring Oswald into it? You know, like he, the last match I had that I remember before I changed from the death incarnate Oswald to broken Oswald was a match where it was with uh, Thaddeus Duke. And it was almost like uh, stars aligned in a way because the way that Matt Hardy's character became broken was because he got sent through a table. Mm -hmm. You know, he was broken. So that's pretty much what happened to Oswald too. It wasn't like two months. It was like two months later. That's when I finally saw the Matt Hardy stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm going to put two and two together. So Matt I became broken money, not money, broken Oswald. And when I came back, I pinned Scully on the ETH, the Fed boards for the extreme title. And I won. Just so we're he, keeping track here, that's now yeah. the extreme championship and the heart mm -hmm. championship. Uh, and the Intercontinental Championship that have all have all fallen your way uh, thus far yep. in your career in the XWF. Okay, just making sure we're yep. keeping track because your resume is, uh, is building. Slowly but surely, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So you pick up the Extreme title. Yeah, I held it for a month and uh, I want to say two weeks. Didn't really defend it on shows it was my first defense on a show because during that cycle, a lot of the cards were going to be booked for about a month, you know, because there was a tournament and all these other things going on. So a month later, I, my first defense was actually against Thaddeus on a show. And we both, from what I've been told we both did equally as good as one another so i did lose the belt but then i pinned him right back so i became two time extreme champ in a month essentially hmm how long did the second run last uh, let's see. That one lasted until I had computer troubles, and that was like, I want to say like a week later before I was supposed to defend it again. I fucking dropped a, uh, the infamous Sabaro cup of Pepsi. <laughs> I've heard that story. <laughs> yeah. How long, how long were you gone this time? Oh, that was about uh, 
I want to see just a few weeks instead of a month. And that whole year is kind of like a blur for me. <laughs> like I, I, when I, so that must mean I didn't, I don't think I did much. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, let's pivot I don't, forward then. Where do you, where, where do, where are you coming back in at? That's when I come back and I'm seen as part of Bob. Oh, so, now we're, 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 my mind so, can track because, uh, yeah. I can remember, uh, the storyline that we were telling, uh, back in that day was, uh, that TK had cracked Robert Main's skull. I took Robert's title shot for snow job in January. We beat Duke. And then there was a big Bob parade afterwards. Um, so tell me about Bob. Tell me how you got involved with Bob. I got a message from Graves, like, I want to say a couple of months before I debuted on a, as part of a segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would say, hey, do you want to join this new group that was going to be starting up? I was like, sure, because I, at the time, I was infamous for not going with the flow. Like, I didn't want to join any uh, factions. I didn't want to join tag teams. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. Why not do something different for once? And that's when I was, that's when Big Money Oswald, as we know him, came to be because i was like i need to do something different i need to go away from the broken matt hardy kind of stuff because i don't know how long that would last feasibly and on top of that i don't want to be sued Mm -hmm. (laughs) i i know it's all fictional i'm not making money out of it but there's always that fear you know if you take somebody's like try to adapt somebody's creative stuff like there could be a a chance yeah for sure i was like fuck it i'm gonna get away from it so i decided to be the billion dollar man and not be so i'm like a step above million dollar man Mm -hmm. here's go and let's go from one person's uh shtick to another but let's and go from million and turn that into a B. <laughs> like, I, I remember during this run, um, I think as a, it, the faction, uh, you know, as it grew, and uh, I know I had the uni, I think the, the, the bastards had the tag titles. Mm-hmm. I want to say you had picked up the Anarchy Championship somewhere in this mid because it was at one point we were holding like that, four or five belts that so, was actually almost a year later was it a year later yeah because i think miss fury Bob, might have yeah. picked up the anarchy championship for just a minute yeah which is graves uh, maybe yeah. i could be wrong i don't know it's two years yeah, ago. Yeah. i've smoked a lot of weed since then uh, <laughs> understand well well tell me about uh you know, I guess going to that Anarchy Championship because uh, I, I can remember this was back when I was GMing in the Fed. And, uh, I remember seeing the effort that you were putting in uh, to to snag that championship, and you had several uh, opportunities along the way, and would just come up short a little bit here and a little bit there, and then goddamn, you, you know, it's almost you came out of fucking left field and floored everybody and picked up the belt. Yeah, that was, um, I don't know what inspired me to where I'm now the god champion, Money Oswald, Mm -hmm. but I'm glad I came up with this because that first promo where Ozzy, like, accesses this demonic god and that very first one. It it was been it would had been like a a year of me doing this, you know, and I 
did not stop. And that's when the, I think it was like the end of March or April last year that the, it started. And that's when like it was just like this big ass terror. And before I got that anarchy title, I won the start of the month. I was part of Leap of Faith. And I was like, I think I was, what, the last three people to touch a briefcase at that time. So I think I was pretty up there in judging if I want to look at it in a meta way, you know. Sure, sure. So I think I was, like, strongly considered that. And that's how I want to view it. (laughs) Nobody tell me different, okay? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Don't tell me I wasn't doing good enough to be at the top there for a second. Oh, uh, you were, man. Uh, you're tearing it up, and uh, even, yeah. even to this day, you're still, you know, active and still, you know, role playing. And uh, I think you're still. On, are you on the Anarchy brand still? Yeah. Which you know that just seems to be the niche, man. And and if that's where the bread and butter is, man, fucking keep on keeping on, you know. Yeah. Essentially, I mean, are you I, still active with Bob? The the fact the 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 group still around? Are you still involved with them? Yeah, That's I'm part of the Brotherhood and Bastards, as it's called now. Yes, for sure. <clears throat> uh, I think it was originally the Brotherhood of Baddies, and. Uh, it's been conceptualized to the Brotherhood of Bastards now, and I think that's that's it's funny stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes it can be a little much, but uh, you know, there you, you can't deny that that the handlers of TK and the handler of Bourbon uh, don't know how to be heels. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. I think, uh, go ahead. I was gonna say I think with uh, Ozzy, it's just. I like going between the two, you know, like to the heel and the face. That's why I usually classify him as a tweener because he does heel shit. But he also likes, you know, the cheering from the crowd, you know. For sure, so. for sure. Um, well, what do you see in your future, man? What do you, what do you got coming up, uh? You know, obviously, I think this is Relentless Weekend. Are you on the card there? Yeah, I've already missed the soft deadline, so I kind of screwed up there. But I've been in a lot of fucking pain, man. Like, summer has not been kind to me. Like, my health with my head. Like, I have that shit 24-7, and migraines are no joke when the heat is around. For oh, sure. my God. So uh, this summer has been a lot of terror. I think I want to say not good, but not bad promos from me. Like not up to snuff where I was before. Like lately, it's just been like mostly trash talk and like almost no role play. And I hate that for myself. Um, I try. That's why I think I, I'm trying to. I think that's where it's good in a way because if I can't sit down and write a promo, at least it'll help me with doing some trash talk and try and get better that way because that's always been my Achilles heel in this bed. I have always been terrible with trash talk. Sometimes I get inspired. And I do really well. Like, uh, what comes to mind is when I was part of the Money Titans, you know, with Thias. Mm-hmm. And I and I told the thugs that I'm going to pay them in exposure. That Everybody seemed to fucking love that line. That was just like, Sometimes I have just good shit come out, but on the whole, terrible. <laughs> and I'm I'm glad summer has allowed me to at least work on that. And with relentless, I'm probably gonna have to. I'm probably gonna have to do 
a lot of trash talking. <laughs> Try not to I, eat an L, but you, you miss the deadline. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna eat an L. I know that. I'm I'm gonna have to try and put out an okay story at least, and do it the, my damnedest and put in a good trash talk. Well, what else do you see happening? Uh, he, what do you? What else do you want to get accomplished uh, the rest of this year? Honestly, I just want to put out some good promos and have, be part of good matches. Like I, my character has never been too much into like, oh, I gotta have gold. I gotta have this. I gotta have that. He, Ozzy, his number one prior, priority has always been. I want to fuck people up. That's his number one to do thing on his list. Like, if he can, if he eats an L, he eats an L. But he's gonna take people with him. You know, as much as he would love to win, if somebody's gonna be limping out after, that's that's a a win in his book. You know. But I would like to at least hold the anarchy as a as a player. I would like to have the anarchy again. And I would like to try and go after the tag titles sometime. I just don't know who would want to team up with me. Because Bobby and TK are already teamed up. And I don't know. Somebody out there may, will want to be out there and be like, hey, I'll tag with you, Dazi. But for right now, I'm not too uh, laser focused on that. I'm just trying to get out of the summertime, hopefully have my mind back to normal again, and I can put out some good shit once more. I hear that, man. I hear that. Uh, here's a fun fact. I didn't think about this because uh, we were – recording on the, the 17th of september uh this airs on friday uh it's my birthday today it is <laughs> on, on the show air day yeah i'm 40 years old uh as of this as of this airing officially Damn. so i can't really think I've, I've celebrated a piece of my birthday with you ozzy did you, I, I didn't Aww. it didn't ever, it didn't cross my mind till right now i was like wait a minute this airs on next friday next friday's my birthday <laughs> <laughs> Uh, officially, well, happy birthday, officially man! Officially forty. <laughs> um, well, before we we close this thing out, uh, I always like to turn things over to you guys, the the guests that come on the show. If you have any questions, you can ask me anything. So, if you got anything, ask away. Honestly, I I just want to ask one question, and the question is this: Can you tell Vinny to uh, stop? <laughs> Uh, I, well, can, I mean, I'm, I'm, or tell him to go fuck himself for me. <laughs> you know what? Here's what we can do. You can tell him that when we get ready to sign off. So before we sign off, uh, do you uh, have uh, anything you want to say to the listeners? Uh, be good to your family. Be good to your friends. Good. Be good. And also, Vinny, I always hear you say it. So it's time. For my payback, you asshole. Fuck you, Benny Lane. <laughs> this has been uh, the Fireside Chat. Uh, I have Chronic Chris Page, handler of. I uh, hope you guys enjoy your weekend, and we'll, we'll chat again with you next week. 